So, what am I going to do? I can talk you through the tanks um, that we recently put in when my arm was good and how we're going to plumb it. Um, they're plastic tanks. And I think there's a bit of anti-plastic hype on YouTube right now about these sorts of things. Um, but in my opinion, for our boat, I think it's fine. These tanks are built very well, the ones we received from Atlas Tanks. They're beautiful, they're solid, they've been tested, and I'm stoked with them. So they're going in our boat. Uh, and, you know, like a lot of things in boats, um, it's personal preference often. You can find a reason for or against anything on a boat um, to be used. And you can quite often, as we do, convince ourselves that it's a good idea to be doing what you're doing. And you can often find people that agree with you and disagree. So, yeah, I love the plastic tanks. I think they're simple, they're cheap, they're effective. Um, and for us, it's perfect. We'll just go have a look at them. So here I am in the boat. Um, we've got our two tanks in, port and starboard. Our water now is about 400 litres. Uh, I'd like a touch more, but that's, you know, we're thinking for four people cruising maybe five at a squeeze, and we're planning on having a water maker installed. Not a massive system, but something to just, if we're in trouble or if we need a top up, we can run the water maker and catch up to what we've lost. Um, but for now, up to 400 litres, I think that'll be fine. It's plenty. So our first tank, the larger of the two is under here. Um, and our other tank is under there on the starboard side and they're actually going to be connected so this one is slightly higher pipe will come down and tap into that one so we're only going to have one filler so one filler comes up here and it fills in there'll be a breather obviously at this end and a breather at this end of this one and then our takeoff will also be our fill I'm hoping that we can have a valve for the larger one and the smaller one so we can suck off the large one and when that runs out, when we run out of water, we know that we then have 150 or so litres left to run off and then we know that, okay, we need to either start the water maker or get ahead um, by filling up again somewhere. So there's very few fittings involved. Big tank. These are our new tanks. From Atlas Tanks on the mainland. Plastic welded, food grade. Wow. Put a bit of a... 
they've done a pretty good job. Follow your eye down here. It's different than this angle, so he's actually matched up my crazy measurements to follow the hull, which is nice. And the base here is straight and flat within reason. Thing, it'll fit. tank that goes underneath a single bunk, the water tank. So me measured the space and made a drawing and sent it off to Atlas Tanks and they welded a plastic water tank for us. Um, and it fits really nicely. And the other tank is going to go under a double bunk. That's a bigger one. And we'll have to make some brackets. Should just look at the outboard forward. There we go. And the bunk is not parallel to the centre line, so we didn't make it with the bevels to the tank, we made it square just to simplify building it. So we lost a little bit of tankage, but uh, I don't know, it seemed easier at the time and I think we're going to have plenty of water so at least we can slide some hoses down the side there and store some stuff if we need to. And then we just have to get the other one. Yeah, and then the lid goes on and someone can sleep here. Yeah. The feet in the hole. <laughs> Not very easy without a bed base, but yeah. Quite nice. Quite nice. Really tricky to get that one in. Yeah. Um, just got to end for end it. So the total flippage. Yeah. We want to have a look if the big tank that we ordered fits too. So the big tank is going to go underneath our double bunk and um, going to have to dismantle some parts of it and then we'll lift the tank in, see if it fits and then we can start thinking about how to secure it and what kind of fittings we'll need. Um, but we'll just take away some of the work we've done before, fit the tank put it all back together, make some new drawings and some shopping lists um, so we can get started on some plumbing, which is going to be interesting. So yeah, we'll dismantle this double bunk, or at least a part of it.
Sushi. So in this space we'll try and fit the tank now that the parts are out. So I'll go and get Matt to help me lift it. And then we'll see if it fits. This is pretty exciting. So we'll see if we can lift it up the stairs. So this is the bigger tank and together they'll make up for 400 litres hopefully. Um, this one also is drawn up by Matt and our friend Josh. So they made a drawing of what it should look like and sent it off and they did a pretty awesome job um, making these with the plastic welds and this looks like it's been folded over. So I don't have a weld on the corner here. Interesting. Yeah, you got flash. Slide down here. You'll break the under. We'll be able to get it out. I think. What we want to do is just sort of nose dive it in and I don't know if this is going to work. Let me just reset my position.
No. This is not going to go now. Okay, take two. Um, can we do this any better? No, just throw it in. I like it. Don't think. Just throw it. I mean, that wood might come back to get us for eventually. So yeah, try and hold that one up. Yeah, beautiful. Ah, oh, dirty. Okay, so when it's in, that is an awesome fit. It's just a rope. It's just a rope. That's sweet. It's even stuck in there. Is it sitting? Yeah, except for the rope. So if the rope wasn't there, that'd be perfect. Beans. That is such good measurement. There's like no gap. Cool. Think of all that delicious water. Hmm. Well, we can probably get another one here. It should be another hundred liters, and then we've got a lot of water. That's epic. That's so cool. Look at it sitting. It's like no space wasted. <coughs> we've got to push. Always squeeze, but. That's good there. We've got all I have to do literally is just screw bits of wood here to stop that moving to the frames. Yeah. I like it. That was a bit of a mission, but I'm impressed with the drawing that it fits so well. Yeah. I should probably just buy some cheap shitty fly and just screw it down. Yeah, the possums are driving us mad. Right, back to my room. Uh, Ifka is away at work right now. She's back to work after Chrissy holidays and we had a good time camping and stuff. Um, so she's <laughs> earning the dollars <laughs> to keep us going. <laughs> um, we're hoping our Beta 60 horsepower engine will arrive soon. That is really exciting. I'm super happy to get that and have a look at that engine and get it in. And then at least I can stare at it, you know, pretty cool. Bit of red bling um, and start thinking about, well, I can't, yeah, 
Can't get it in. Can't. Just start looking at it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So summer's here, obviously, in full swing down in Tasmania. It's super hot, and the funny thing about strip plank boats that people don't talk about, but I've talked to people about when you get the information out of them, is that until you seal the boat with epoxy, the planking moves. Um, especially with Taz Oak, something like Taz Oak, it needs to be sealed both sides with epoxy or fiberglass, both, whatever, or else it's gonna move with the moisture between winter and summer. So right now, Tarkine, she moves between winter and summer. We made a big push to try and get the diagonals on both sides, but we've run out of steam, and obviously I can't do anything right now. So we're about a third or so of the way up starboard. And we may have to leave that now until after winter. It's a weird one, but if we wait for winter, again, the planks, this four and a half strip planking will swell up and close the gaps because there's these tiny little gaps, hairline cracks every now and then along the planking where the glue doesn't give way, but the wood actually splinters and pops. And it's like little gun shots. You know, it's like a gun goes off in the background sometimes in the height of summer where it's, they just dry out too much, they can't handle it and they go pop. Um, it's not an issue. I know at least two other boats that have had this problem or thing happen to them. And it's the same thing they said, until you get epoxy on both sides, it will do that and the boat will move. Um, so I'm not too fussed. I think the diagonals also, once they're on, they bring it all together, you know, they hold it together. And we've glassed a lot of the inside, but we haven't done all of it yet. And the sun comes in all along here and bounces in. So that's why we've done the diagonals on this side, because that's the side that gets the sun in summer. It comes through this laser light up here and really barrels in, and you can see that now. The other side, this side, is shadier. Doesn't get as much sun, and it's quite nice. Um, a bit cooler. It also gets a lot hotter on deck than down here, which is amazing. This whole shed is a big, massive concrete slab. And it adds like, acts like a bit of a cool, cool box, you know? It's so insulated, and it stays cool down low, but the heat up the top it's pretty crazy. Um, so they're just things you have to deal with. I mean, at least, I don't know. I'm not too fast. Unfortunately, she'll just have to sit. That was all for you for real. Loves it. Yeah. Loves it. The squeaker. Keep going, Obi. Sing me to bed. Sing me my lullaby. Yes, good boy. Are you nibbling? Where's Pig? <laughs> <laughs>